So what do we do when we find the inverse of a function and there's restrictions on the domain? Like this one right here, we have f of x equals x squared plus two, but only where x is greater than or equal to zero. Well, that's what we're gonna talk about. The first thing I like to do is I like to graph this and just kind of see what it looks like. We know it's a parabola, x squared. The plus two is shifting it up two. So roughly speaking, this graph should look something like this where it's been shifted up two. Now, here they're saying x is greater than or equal to zero. That means that we're only interested in the part that's to the right or equal to zero. So we're really just looking at this branch, this right branch of the parabola. And why are they telling us that? Well, there's something called the horizontal line test. And the only way that the inverse of a function will be a function is if it passes that horizontal line test. So what you do is you draw these uh, horizontal lines like this, and if it crosses the graph at more than one point, that tells you that the inverse of that function you know, will not be a function. So that's why we're restricting, because if we just look at this right branch here, this right half of the graph, see it's only crossing uh, once, so that means that the inverse will be a function. Now another way to look at this is, when you find the inverse of a function, graphically what this is, it's a reflection over this line y equals x. So if we were to reflect this, okay, or fold it over this line, what this graph would look like is a parabola on its side like this. Now you can see this actually is gonna fail the vertical line test. Remember the vertical line test? So for this input, there's more than one output. That's not a function, right? But if we're just using this branch right here, this right branch, when we reflect it over, we're just gonna be looking at this part of the graph, okay, the top part, and this does pass the vertical line test. It's only crossing at most once. So that means for every input, there's only one output. Okay, the next thing I like to do is I like to look at the domain here. So the domain of the original function is what? X is greater than or equal to zero, and the range is Y is greater than or equal to two, right? But when you find the inverse of a function, because you're switching the X and the Y values, the domain and the range switch. So for the inverse, our domain and range switch. So now the range, which was y is greater than or equal to, to two, the domain is gonna be x is greater than or equal to two. The range, okay, is gonna be what the original domain was. So this is gonna be y is greater than or equal to zero. So you can see over here on our graph, yep, that makes sense. X is greater than or equal to two, and the range is y is greater than or equal to zero. So they're just switching. So this is important because we're gonna want to state this domain here uh, when we find the inverse of this function. So let's go ahead and do that now. f of x, you can replace that with y. That's like our output. And now what we're going to do is wherever you see x, you're going to put y and vice versa. So we have x equals y squared plus 2. We're going to solve for the new y here. Work from the outside in. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So we get x minus 2 equals y squared and we're gonna take the square root of both sides. Now remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you get two answers, right? We're actually gonna get y equals plus or minus the square root of x minus two. Now let's look at this for a moment. See, positive square root of x minus two is this graph right here. Negative times the square root of x minus two, that negative is gonna reflect it. That's this branch of the graph right here. We're only interested in the positive one in this case, because of the domain restrictions. We want uh, the range to be y is greater than or equal to zero, and we want um, the domain to be x is greater than or equal to two. And that makes sense as well, because you know if x is not equal to two or greater, then you're gonna be taking the square root of a negative number, which is undefined. So let's just go ahead and write on here, x is greater than or equal to two. We just want the positive one here. And this is gonna be your inverse function. Instead of y, we can replace this with the inverse notation, f inverse of x, to be a little bit more precise about it. Now, you might be saying, Mario, what happens if they said x is less than or equal to zero, like this part of the graph? Well, then we would want this part here, and we would use the, the negative square root of x minus two. If you want more practice with inverse functions, follow me over to that video right there. I call it my uh, complete guide to inverse functions, and I go into a little bit more depth. So if you want more practice, follow me over to that video and we'll dive into some more examples.